Kia Koto, Coursera Toku Ingwa. I she, her pronouns. I'm a member of the International Socialist Organization and of Queer Endurance Defiance. I'm queer and I'm proud of my identity as a transgender woman. I'm also a critical care paramedic and I'm here to make a contribution to the corredo around healthcare, around the healthcare system. I'd like to draw on my experience working within that system to highlight four critical weaknesses and touch on what we might do to address them. First, there's an insufficiency of training for healthcare workers specific to gender identity and recognition, acknowledgement, healthcare needs, and healthcare solutions. This is beginning to change thanks to our visibility and ongoing mahi, advocating for acknowledgement of our humanity. But overall, the pace of improvement looks and feels glacial. Second, and I'm sorry to say, biological essentialism is baked into many aspects of the healthcare infrastructure. An example is a pre-hospital electronic patient documentation system that despite half a decade of feedback has stubbornly remained as only identifying patients by sex from one of the following four categories. And I apologize in advance for how this is gonna sound, but they are male, female, unknown, and indeterminate. <laughs> This is honestly a tone-deaf failure to recognise social progress. Taturanga Aotearoa, Stats New Zealand, has developed a significantly better, though it still could be improved, categorisation approach, which could immediately be adopted across the health sector. Third, the under-resourcing and resource mismanagement prevalent across the healthcare sector leads healthcare workers to be overworked and overstressed. The result is what's called compassion fatigue. Our clinicians have often not had their own mental and physical health needs adequately met, and they are exhausted. Fourth, there are insufficient patient-guided treatment approaches and inadequate referral pathways. Health is complex, and no single worker could ever be an expert of every single aspect of healthcare. That's okay, but two solutions are needed for that challenge. First, clear guidelines can empower GPs and their patients to keep many of the decisions within the primary health setting. And when a patient is referred to a specialist, that pathway needs to be able to accept a patient and continue care within a reasonable time frame. Trans people currently suffer from a lack of functioning of either solution. And you've heard some stories of failures in both of those respects just today. So what can be done? The training of new healthcare workers must include significant material acknowledging the existence and the healthcare needs of transgender people. <laughs> Health infrastructure needs to be brought into the 21st century, including ways of documenting people's identities that aren't demeaning. way more staff across every field of health and we need the working conditions of those staff to be dramatically improved so they don't burn out. Yeah. And we need good patient-centred guidelines for the treatment of transgender patients within primary health and good resourcing of specialist fields to ensure we don't die of old age while waiting for a referral. I'd love to see executive managers, board members and government ministers be held accountable for decades of gaslighting healthcare workers for failures that are systemic. I'd love all areas of the healthcare system to be honest with the public about its failures. I'd love to see the government tax capital gains, tax housing yeah. portfolios yeah. and luxury health wealth and tax companies and then use that money to properly fund our health system for the benefit of all. QED's healthcare demands needs to decrease anyone else's quality of healthcare. In the process of ensuring there are enough resources to meet these demands, the government can ensure the healthcare system is funded to meet everyone's needs. We can demand increased resourcing of the entire healthcare system. We can demand a better life for everyone. Namihi.